What's up my fellow LTD addicts? Let's talk about ShortPixel. ShortPixel is an image optimization tool that's designed to help your website load faster. Here's the idea. You upload an unoptimized image that's way too big to your website, and before serving it to your customers, ShortPixel will reduce the file size while retaining the quality of the image, almost like magic. Now there are many free tools on the market that do a similar thing. So should you invest in the AppSumo $39 lifetime offering for ShortPixel? You're gonna find out in this video, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Dave from ThatLTD.life where I review software tools with lifetime offers. If you wanna follow along with what we're doing here today, you can click the link in the description below. That is our affiliate link, which means it kicks us back a little bit of money over at the channel if you decide to go ahead and make a purchase after watching this review. So let's get right into it. I'm over here on the AppSumo deal page looking at their newest offering for ShortPixel. Now I say newest because this is actually the third time that ShortPixel has been on AppSumo. It is also the most expensive Expensive time that ShortPixel has been on AppSumo, $39 here, whereas the last two times it's only been $29. Let's see what you're gonna get for 39 bucks. Let's go down to the codes. For a single code, you're looking at 12,000 images per month, and then you can stack that up to five times, and you're just gonna get five times the images if you stack five codes. So each code is worth 12,000 images per month, and I wanna be very clear here, you can use these images across as many websites as you like. There are WordPress plugins to make using the compression tools very easy. However, you're not limited to WordPress. They also have a Shopify app and you can actually install this on any PHP based website through some of their extra tools. So what you're looking at, uh, in addition to the 12,000 images per month is a hundred gigabytes of CDN traffic per month uh, based on each code that you get. So you can get up to 500 gigabytes of CDN traffic. Now here is why that's important. Previous versions of ShortPixel did not include their newest plugin, which is called Adaptive Images. So Adaptive Images is unique because when someone is on their phone, they will receive a smaller sized image, so lower pixels, than when they're on their laptop or their desktop. So it's actually being smart about the, the device that's visiting your website and serving them the appropriate size image. So that's pretty cool. And that serving is coming through the ShortPixel CDN. You can use your own CDN, so you don't have to stick with what ShortPixel offers. It's actually very easy to set up, and I'll show you in this video. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is a bit of a shootout. I've got three tools here designed to help me optimize images. Of course, ShortPixel has a web version. Then we've got Kraken.io, which is another very similar image optimizer and TinyPNG, another popular WordPress uh, image compressor. I thought we'd run the same image through all three uh, web interfaces and just see who does the best job. So I've got this image right here, which is uh, a man flying in a paper plane, a uh, nice stock image. Uh, it's been resized to 600 pixels, and, and the reason for that is the original image was about 16 megabytes. However, through the web interfaces for these tools, they do limit you on file size. Uh, I actually don't see that on the short pixel uh, site, but I know that Kraken limits you to one megabyte and TinyPNG limits you to five megabytes. So let's see how each tool performs. I'm just going to drag and drop into each one of the offerings here. And let's check back here. So it looks like uh, short pixel is already done. Uh, it went from 0.9 megabytes to uh, 74.5 kilobytes. And we will definitely compare the quality here, but first let's just look at the image size. Kraken is done and the original size was uh, the 920 kilobytes and it reduced it to 554 kilobytes, which uh, is a good reduction. They're saying 72%, but uh, not anywhere near what ShortPixel was able to do. And let's see what TinyPNG did. Uh, it just reduced it to 156 kilobytes. So uh, let's go ahead and download these. Obviously, ShortPixel is by far the, the winner here, but I'm gonna go ahead and download the files and we can take a look. 
All right, so I've got the original image along with the three compressed versions of the photo up here. And I've went ahead and zoomed in on the man because I really wanna look at how some of this detail in his scarf changes between the different compression tools. So here is the original, and I apologize that the crop is gonna jump around just slightly here. Uh, but what we're looking at, you know, is this scarf has a lot of detail to it. There's obviously a very distinct pattern, and there's also some motion to the scarf because he's moving. Uh, so there's a bit of a blur applied to the image here. Now watch how that changes as we go through the different uh, tools. So here is tiny PNG. You can see uh, right away, I'll try to get the, the crop to match a little bit better. But you can see as I switch that there's some extra noise that's added to the photo right around the outline of that scarf. I actually also see a slight change in hue where the white isn't quite as white on the tiny PNG as it was on the original. It's got more of kind of an orangish, like where the, the red is bleeding over into uh, the, those details. It's very slight. They both look good. We're not talking about, especially if I were to zoom out and see the entire image. They're both completely passable for an average website to load. But if image quality is of utmost importance to you, uh, it's important to look at those details. All right, let's look at how ShortPixel compares. Uh, here again is the original, kind of cleanse our palette. And then here is ShortPixel. And I would say there's even more noise here than on the tiny PNG version. Uh, you can see quite a bit of noise uh, going uh, right between the, the details here of this image. Uh, let's, let's compare it to tiny PNG. Uh, there's not quite as much uh, kind of that uh, blurring going on where you can actually see the pixels kind of get distorted on the tiny PNG version. Here is short pixel again. Uh, I'm even seeing quite a bit of distortion in the man's face. Uh, whereas we didn't see quite as much here on the tiny PNG. And let's look at Kraken, which actually had the largest image size, so I would hope it would look the best. Uh, and it does look pretty good. It looks pretty uh, true to the original. Now, how much does this matter in real world use? Well, here's probably a more practical example. Here's the entire image without zooming in on so much detail. Uh, the original image, tiny PNG, short pixel, and Kraken. I barely notice any change at all. So for my money, as someone who does SEO and web development, I definitely would prefer the smaller image size that ShortPixel provides uh, at the same reasonable quality. Uh, unless you really zoom in, you'll start to see that distortion. Let's talk about the WordPress plugins. Now, what I really love about ShortPixel's plugins is how easy they are to use. What you're gonna see in a second is that there's not only one flavor of compression that ShortPixel offers. So here's what you wanna do. Head over to the WordPress repository, search for ShortPixel, and then download one of their plugins. The two that you're gonna be looking at here are the image optimization plugin, as well as the adaptive image optimization plugin. Remember that the adaptive plugin is going to resize your images based on the device size of your user. ShortPixel themselves recommends using adaptive images when you have a larger audience, say across the country or across the entire world. However, if you have a local audience, they recommend using just their standard image optimization. Once you've got the plugin installed, setting it up is super easy. You're gonna choose between one of their three flavors of compression. You have a lossy compression, which is what we saw in the web interface. So that's gonna be the most destructive, but also provide you the smallest file size. It's what they recommend for most web users. If you do photography or other images that are more sensitive to any sort of distortion, you can choose either their glossy setting or on the high end, their lossless setting. You can think of this as small, medium, and large, basically. That might be a little bit more helpful to common people looking at this. So lossy means it adds a little bit more noise, but you get the smaller size, and lossless keeps the images pixel perfect, is what they say, but it will reduce the file size. How does that work? I don't know, it sounds like magic to me. The only other option is for WebP support, which is a new file format for the web. Now, not all browsers support this, so ShortPixel will display the WebP images only when appropriate. I do recommend leaving this checked as it is good for your SEO. When you're ready, save your changes and let's head over to the Advanced tab. Here is where you can set up your CDN. Now, you don't need to change this, but if you do have your own CDN, you could enter the URL for it right here. There is one more option here which is slightly confusing. I recommend leaving it as is unless you run into trouble, but let me describe what it does for you. So where it says replace method, you have SRC both or SRC set. SRC is going to be applicable to most people's websites. 
However, if you have effects on your website when you hover over the image and it resizes, like uh, grows or something, you may need to switch over to this SRC set option. It just changes how ShortPixel is interacting with your website. All right, so I went ahead and uploaded that same image to a very simple website here. And you can see uh, there's the man flying over the city. I'm in the back end of Elementor. Uh, and I've set this image to be 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. Let's head over to the front end. I've actually got the developer tools open for Chrome. And you can see over here that as I have it loaded in kind of a mobile phone format, it's displaying this image uh, from the short pixel CDN. Here's the URL. And it is a 300 pixel by 90 pixel image. If I were to switch over into desktop mode, now it's going to be displaying this 1024 by 683 pixel image. So the adaptive process is working seamlessly. I didn't have to do anything. It was kind of just like magic. Now let's look at the standard image optimizer for WordPress. This plugin has been around for a few years and it has a stellar reputation. You're going to see a very, very similar interface here where you can choose between your compression types. You get a few additional options to compress thumbnails. Now remember, it needs to compress the thumbnails because it is not adapting the images on the fly like the adapted images plugin. You can also choose to exclude images that are of a larger size. So this could be useful if you're a photographer and you're going to upload 20 megabyte files uh, of the full originals and you don't want them to be compressed at all. You'd simply set the exclusions here. You also get even more advanced features here. I'm not gonna go through all of these. Uh, if you're an image expert, you probably already know what they do. You can connect this to Cloudflare if you like and you can even see statistics about how much your images have been compressed. Now the standard operating procedure for ShortPixel is to look at your existing media library and go through and compress everything. So here is the option to save and go to bulk process. I've clicked that and now it's going to tell me what it's going to do in terms of compression. I've got 128 images on this site, which means there are actually 576 thumbnails because I'm using WooCommerce for a total of 704 images. So if you're the type of person thinking, I'll never have more than 100 images on my website, well, these add up pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and hit start optimizing and it works in the background. I know it's working in the background because you'll see this friendly little robot doing a dance in the upper uh, menu bar here. So it goes through and it shows you exactly what it's doing in terms of the original image compared to the optimized version. And it's also giving you a blow by blow account of how much space is being reduced. You can let this work in the background. I've had it take up to two days for really large sites. For most of the time for a smaller local business website, you can plow through it. You see here in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. So now that you understand how ShortPixel works, the question is, should you buy it? In a word, yes. I'm never that blunt on this channel. If you've been following along with the other reviews, you know I'm hypercritical of each and every plugin. However, ShortPixel is the standard for image optimization. There really isn't a better tool around, and I'm super surprised to see them continually return to AppSumo. This could possibly be the last time we see their deal, so if you haven't stacked it as high as it goes, I highly recommend doing it. If you do any web work at all, you're eventually going to grow to the point where you're going to work on a huge site that has hundreds of thousands of images and you're going to be very glad you have ShortPixel. ShortPixel can pay for itself if you just get one client that has a slow loading website. You tell them, hey, I'm going to speed up your website. It's going to cost this many dollars. You go ahead and run ShortPixel and magically it is improved. So as an overall score, I'm going to give ShortPixel a 9.3. Yep, it's replacing Fleek as my highest rated LTD yet. I'm continually impressed by the ShortPixel team. They're always adding new options to the software as well as free plugins on the WordPress repository. If you need to regenerate your thumbnails or replace an image in your media library, ShortPixel has great plugins to help you do that. They've got hundreds of thousands of installs and a great reputation. I highly recommend investing in this plugin if you can afford it. If you like the video, make sure you click like so I know you appreciate the content. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notifications when new reviews are posted. Once again, to get this deal, you can use the link in the description below. That is our affiliate link, so we get a little bit of coin back here at the channel. Helps us keep the lights on and make these reviews for you. That's gonna do it for today. Leave me any comments or questions below and I'll get back to each and every one of you. Until next time, see you in the next review. Yeah.